this pleasant little trio of books here are the Holy Bible, which of course is the Old and New Testament. You have the Book of Mormon, which we're going to be looking at today, which is, in case you didn't know, another testament of Jesus Christ. And two other books here, in one concise volume. You have the Doctrine and Covenants and the Pearl of Great Price. So you probably guessed there is a Mormon theme to this uh, particular video. Uh, we're just going to look at some of the things in the Book of Mormon and uh, little difficulties which I think might be of interest to anyone who's in the Mormon Church, in the Mormon faith, or is, is thinking about converting to it. Um, okay, now, Christians will be well aware of this, the Holy Bible, 66 books altogether. We consist of, it consists of, of course, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The New Testament being when Jesus Christ came onto the scene. And that book has been around for well over 2,000 years. Now here we have the Book of Mormon. This came onto the scene in the mid-1800s in America thanks to a person called Joseph Smith who is now considered uh, the prophet of the Mormons. This is a young man who had visions from God and was told to find some golden plates on which was written the Book of Mormon, which was a further testament of Jesus Christ about, basically, Jesus Christ's adventures in America after he came back to life again. Yeah, some people have called the Book of Mormon Christian fan fiction. And it kind of is, in a way, because it's, it's obviously modeled on the Bible. Uh, it's written in that sort of, you know, thee and thou, and it came to pass, and yea, verily, all that kind of stuff, um, to make it sound more like the King James Bible, which was the preferred Bible of the time in the 1800s. And, yeah, really, uh, if this was to be, uh, if this was a book which was revere, uh, revealed to Joseph Smith in the 1800s, why wasn't it revealed in language of the time. But no, no, it, it had to be revealed in a, in, a, in a style which people would would buy as sounding Bible-y, and I think Joseph Smith knew this. I'll just have a quick, quick look here. Uh, we, I know we have some pictures in here. Uh, in case you didn't know, this is a painting of Joseph Smith, their prophet. He's made to look really almost godlike here. Uh, I don't think he was quite that good-looking in real life. Uh, he was actually a bit of a gold digger. Uh, he was in trouble with the law a lot of times, as we will see. Uh, but when it came to uh, coming up with this book, Another Testament of Jesus Christ, a lot of people believed him. And they still do, to this day. He published this, uh, the Book of Mormon, in, I think it was 1830, around about that time. And a few years later, about 1835, came out the Doctrine and Covenants and the Pearl of Great Price, around about that time. Uh, as that implies, this lets, uh, sets down the canon and the doctrines uh, for the Church, because the, the Church was being established at that point. They already had their... their their book, and uh, now they needed their, their laws and rules, basically. Pearl of Great Price is just a, uh, it's a very small book. They now include uh, something called the Book of Abraham, which is uh, more revelations, which were apparently given to Joseph Smith. Uh, this is also the book uh, somewhere in there. I think in Abraham it's where they mention, uh, I think, yeah, there it is. I don't know if you can see that, Kolob which is uh, apparently a planet where, that's where God lives. Yes, you, you heard right, folks. Okay. Right. So, why am I concerned about these three books there? Well, uh, three things really, which uh, give me pause. Uh, again, for anyone who doesn't know about Mormonism, it's the doctrine that... Uh, says it's okay to have lots of wives, what they call plural wives, more than one wife, because apparently the Bible says so, or Joseph Smith thought it was a good idea. 
and he himself married a whole slew of women in his town because God told him to. And they believed him. Okay, so what does it say in the Book of Mormon about that? Now, oddly enough, if we come to the Book of Jacob here, chapter 1, verse 15, Okay, uh, yes, and now it came to pass that the people of Nephi, under the reign of the second king, began to grow hard in their hearts, and indulge themselves somewhat in wicked practices, such like, as like unto David of, the old, of old, desiring many wives and concubines, and also Solomon his son. So it's referencing there uh, David and Solomon from the Old Testament of the Bible, uh, calling their... Uh, polyg polygamous practices, lots of wives, lots of concubines, as, as wicked. So, Joseph Smith had already established this in the Book of Mormon when it was uh, published in 1830. Um, but strangely enough, things sort of changed, or he sort of changed his mind, I should say, by the time he published this, The Doctrine and Covenants. Now, where we're going to look is... Here we go. Doctrine and Covenants, section 132. What is this? This is a revelation given through Joseph Smith the prophet at Nauvoo, Illinois, recorded on July 12, 1843, relating to the new and everlasting covenant, including the eternity of the marriage covenant, as also, as also plurality of wives. Now remember, this was, uh, this was written later, the uh, Doctrine and Covenants. Book of Mormon was written first, and then came this. Okay, now it's just, it's right here at the beginning. Verily, thus saith the Lord unto you, my servant Joseph, Joseph Smith, that inasmuch as you have inquired of my hand to know and understand wherein I, the Lord, justified my servants Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as also Moses, Moses, Moses David, and Solomon, my servants, as touching the principle and doctrine of their having many wives and concubines, Behold, and lo, I am the Lord thy God, and will answer thee as touching this matter. Therefore, prepare thy heart to receive and obey the instructions which I am about to give unto you. For all those who have this law revealed unto them must obey the same. So, they, this is God saying this, okay? What I'm about to tell you, you've got to obey it. For behold, I reveal unto you a new and everlasting covenant, this is a law which will never change. And if ye, if ye abide not that covenant, then ye are damned. So if you don't follow this law, that's it. You're going to outer darkness, which is their version of hell. Okay, for no one can reject this covenant and be permitted to enter into my glory. So you won't be able to go to heaven unless you now follow the law regarding... Lots of wives, as said here. Now that's strange, isn't it? So, in the Book of Mormon, he writes that having lots of wives is a terrible thing. Later on, when he writes this, he's obviously decided that, hey, having lots of wives is not a bad idea. And that's exactly what he did. He went around his town and surrounding area going up to women, even married women, and women too young to, to be married, and said, uh, God's told me that I have to take lots of wives, and you're going to be one of them. Okay. Another thing I want to look at is the law. Okay. Again, we're going to go to the Doctrine and Covenants. Let's see. What was revealed to Joseph? About laws. Now we're looking in section 58, and this is verse 21. Okay, let no man break the laws of the land, for he that keepeth the laws of God hath no need to break the laws of the land. Okay, so there you go. This is part of the doctrine and covenants. In fact, I think this is quite important. I, th I think we should read this again. Let no man break the laws of the land. 
For he that keepeth the laws of God hath no need to break the laws of the land. Okay. Now, he's very explicit there. Okay. Now, it's strange when you think back to uh, Joseph Smith himself. He was always, and I mean always, in trouble with the law. His whole life. Uh, he had about, I think it was 47 or 48 criminal cases in his lifetime. And uh, 200 suits brought against him. Uh, of course, the uh, the adherence to to uh, to Mormonism will say, "Oh no, no, no! This is religious persecution." I mean, but, the, but this happened long before he started going around saying that God was speaking to him. Um, but he was um, he was known in the area where he grew up in America as uh, as being a a treasure hunter. He would uh, allegedly he would steal steal something of value from someone in the town, uh, go bury it, uh, then offer to go find, with his magical devices, the Urim and Thummim, these two seeing stones, uh, he'd go to find these these items, then of course he could just go dig them up, bring them back a little bit dirty, and say, look, I found them, and he would take the reward. But um, it didn't last long but he was before he was brought to trial for that kind of thing. Okay, so it's not looking very good or the prophet of Joseph Smith. And if he's not who he said he was, a prophet of God, then really the whole religion kind of falls down, doesn't it? Okay. Now, yet again, we're going to go to the Doctrine and Covenants. And what I want us to look at, lastly, here in this video, is a prophecy. Okay. Obviously, a prophecy which was revealed to Joseph Smith. Now, in section 84, we have a revelation given through Joseph Smith the prophet at Kirtland, Ohio, on September 22nd and 23rd, 1832. Now, here it is down here, right at the beginning. A revelation of Jesus Christ under his servant Joseph Smith and six elders as they united their hearts and lifted their voices on high. Yea, the word of the Lord concerning his church, established in the last days for the restoration of his people. And he has spoken by the mouth of his prophets, and for the gathering of his saints to stand upon Mount Zion, which shall be the city of New Jerusalem. Which city shall be built, beginning at the temple lot, which is appointed by the finger of the Lord in the western boundaries of the state of Missouri and dedicated by the hand of Joseph Smith. So there's a temple which God said must be built in Missouri. And others, uh, whom the Lord was well pleased. Here's the interesting bit. Okay. Verily, this is the word of the Lord, that the city of New Jerusalem shall be built by the gathering of the saints, beginning at this place, even the place of the temple, which temple shall be reared in this generation. So what he's saying is, there will be a temple built, and it will be built within the lifetime of Joseph Smith. So that's in the mid-1800s. For verily, this generation shall not pass away until a house shall be built unto the Lord. Now, anyone looking into history will see that a, uh, a temple wasn't built. Uh, Joseph Smith was killed in, I think it was 1844, and the religion was a little bit of disarray for a while. Um, but to cut a long story short, it didn't happen. Now, if you go to Missouri now, uh, there are a couple of temples. One was dedicated in 2012, and the one before was dedicated in 1997, so it's hardly in Joseph Smith's lifetime. Okay. Strange, that. Now, the Holy Bible. This is the last thing we're going to look at today because in the Holy Bible it says something which should pretty much put a, pretty much put a, a nail in the, in the coffin. Now, we're going to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 18, chapter 18, verse 22. Okay. If what a prophet pro proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. That prophet has spoken presumptuously. Do not be afraid of him. There you go. So the Bible, which the Mormons do revere, 
says that if a prophet proclaims a prophecy that does not come true, pay no attention to him. He's not a prophet. It says it right there in black and white. So, Joseph Smith is not a prophet. He first wrote, or it was supposedly revealed to him, that polygamy was a bad thing. He then went on to say, uh uh uh, it's a good thing. He also said that you should never break the laws of the land, and yet he was involved in 48 criminal cases. So, all I would say is, my dear friends, please do the math.